Steve, with the weekend off, what has been the plan of action since your last match to prepare for this one? Well, we've been in every day. We don't have a weekend off. Um, I think there the came a time that the, the boys had a couple of days, middle of last week, we played obviously played a closed door game over it. The Doncaster Rovers had come away and then those that were fit and available in a couple of days, but then we were in all weekend, so we're in again today and we're preparing as best we can for to host one of the best teams in the league, really. I think they're outstanding in a lot of the performances. Uh, Michael's had four or five transfer windows to affect what he wants to do now. And, um, and they're a really good side, as, as we've seen in the last two or three performances. I was reading that you'd had a conversation with the chairman and he called for the old Steve Evans. What does the old Steve Evans look like then? Well, I think more assertive. I think people think that's more aggressive, more assertive. Um, more assertive with the group, more assertive with staff, more assertive myself, more assertive, assertive on match days, just, just being fired up more, getting the boys fired up more. And the consequences of that, as the chairman said to me, I might spend a couple of days sitting up with him now and again, but he'd live with that if, if we've got that fire and passion back in the team. So, and arguably no one can dispute that's been missing then, not all, but a number of the performances, but arguably like we've just been discussing before we done this interview is that very similar to Manchester City if you're missing big big players or big players and arguably you know we've been missing huge players like since the start of the season but that only goes so long before it becomes just excuse based and not fact but it has been a fact so hopefully those guys are out of the treatment room and, and there's no more excuses in that front for any of us to hide behind. How much is it on them though because you can be as passionate as you want can't you until 7.45 on a Tuesday night they've got to show it on the pitch as well, haven't they? And, and in the last few games, people would argue perhaps they haven't shown it, Steve. I think they're right to argue that case. I think the players would accept that in, in, in some spheres. We spoke about big players being missing in confidence and goals change games. And again, we're just discussing Sheffield Wednesday's game yesterday. It could be three or four down and they got a 95th minute winner and win the game. So goals change games, goals change spirit. Um, but if, you've not got, if you're not fired up and, and passionate for a Tuesday night under the lights at New York playing Lincoln, and they'll bring a decent travelling support, then you're, you're never going to be fired up. So it's an important game for us. We have a big, important week, seven days, you know, home on, home to Lincoln, away to Blackpool, and then home in the, a, a tournament we'd like to do very well in, in the Virtue Trophy. So so from that point of view, it's um, but it's one at a time, and we need to be focused and arguably produce a performance like we did at, against Reading or Huddersfield or for an hour away at Wickham, etc., to to get three points. How important is it to have that performance and result at home this Tuesday against Lincoln, at home at the New York? Listen, I think if you're a fan, you see winning. That's it. You see three points, you see a defeat, you see a draw. But I listened to the, like most people probably did, watching Liverpool and Manchester City yesterday. But I always, I always take probably more time to listen to the manager's pre and post match debriefs and how they change. And I listened to the manager saying he felt if his team produced the performance against Manchester City, they could beat them. Because with the perform without the performance, results don't follow. So what we focused on with the group, what Jim had focused on his conversations with me largely, was let's get the performances right. And performances will produce results over a period of time. So the chairman's not necessarily saying we need to beat Lincoln. What he's saying is let's get a performance rate against Lincoln. Like we did, for example, against Wrexham, only we lost the game, but it was probably only... Very few people that know why we didn't get a point, or, th or certainly three points that day. But if the performance is right, we'll win games. When you say more assertive rather than more aggressive, have you been putting your arm around players sometimes? You know, come on, trying to build them up maybe a bit more this, this season. And is it now time for a few home truths for some of these players who are probably well compensated to play for this football club and have not given what I think you and the fans would expect? I don't think there's a player here that's not not well compensated, they're all very well paid in, in terms of League One standards. We're not the Birmingham's and the Wrexham's, they, they sit in their own Charlton's, they sit in their own, but everyone else we certainly compete with. Um, have I have I got to look at myself that I've been a bit soft at times and a bit more compassionate because of the circumstances in the last two years at the football club? Yes. So the conversation with the chairman, I think I said it was very clear. By pretending, Steve, that you're walking in here for the first time and I've told you we're in a mess, sort it. How would you react? I said, different to what I'm doing now. He said, well, go home, have a bath, come out the bath, 
and B, walking in for the first time. I know it's a bit fictitious, and, but he's trying to paint a scenario that how he wants us to approach it. And that's what we've done since I had a meeting with him a, a week past Monday. Did you appreciate that clarity? Is it, is it good sometimes for a chairman to say what he wants from you and that you can understand it and now you can go and do it? Yeah, there's one thing you get from Tony Stewart is absolute gospel. You get, you get the truth, you get how he's feeling. Um, the chairman wants what we want. He wants what the fans want. He puts hundreds of thousands of pounds in this football club every, every week, every month. Um, so he wants to see his team competitive. Our chairman has always understood. I had this conversation with Paul Warren. He's a, our chairman has always understood his team can lose. They can lose a succession of games. It's, it's almost, was it back in whatever year it was, 17, 18 or wherever, Paul Warren took this football club to Blackpool. Need a win like I need a win. And uh, managed to get one. And from there, they win promotion. So we're still very much in it if we can deal with the next three or four games. We'll have to deal with the next three or four games. Or January may be too late for us to affect it in a major way, as in competing at the top end of this league. Has the chairman applied any pressure or has he been fully supportive? He's been wholly supportive. Listen, he, do, does, yeah, he doesn't give you any guarantees in life. What he said is um, there's, there's no panic in his eyes if, if we don't beat Lincoln or we don't beat Blackpool, but his, his views are very clear. He needs to see performances improving. Jim can watch the performances the same as everyone else can. He's got some really good people around him that that know this game, and our, ch our chairman knows. He knows a worker. He knows when his team's competing. He knows when they're closing people down. They've got high energy, etc. And in, in, in a lot of the games, not all, but in some of the games where we've not performed, that's that's not been there. In the games we performed at the New York, that's been there in abundance. Mm. Do you think that? And you mentioned earlier that managers have had a quite a few transfer windows. You you're what a month away now from. January starting. As you, as you sit here today, are you think actually, I've got a lot of work to do in January. I might need to rebuild this team again. No, no, you don't have to rebuild it. We've got really good players here. We've been very, we, we need to keep players free of injury. They need to keep themselves free of injury. There's no, there's no player goes out and wants to be injured. There's no player wants to be in here seven days a week on a rehab and working with the medical team when it's when the other players have maybe got a day off or whatever, they don't they don't want to do it. They don't want to turn up on a match day and have a big coat on and set up in the stand. They want to, they, they want to be in the New York theatre playing football. So it's not a case of a rebuild, but the, there will certainly be two or three areas that we'll that we're looking to move around. And again, our chairman has been has been supportive in that. But but let's let's worry about the here and now. Let's worry about Lincoln. Let's worry about. Blackpool, let's worry a bit Tranmere and then when we've dealt with those three games we can look forward to Northampton. So we just we just have to get some points accrued and get ourselves sorted at this table before we can really go with any purpose to our chairman. Although when I had dinner with him on last Wednesday night he said to me, Let's let's sort these next three or four games out and then we can really plan for, for January. If we're honest, do the are there some players at this club that owe the fans a performance? I think we all owe them a performance. I'm the manager. I take ultimate responsibility for the for the team. And it, you know, I've always said to the chairman, don't don't look at players, look at me. You know, because because I represent them. I'm their leader. I'm I'm the person. And, and that's why you always need a good leader above you as a chairman, as an owner, to to remind you of your own strengths, your own strengths. Because everyone shows at your weaknesses, don't they? Everyone shows at my weaknesses when we don't win a game. I'm 30 years in management, I've never had a run like this, ever. But if a train goes into a dark tunnel and it breaks down a little bit or it's stuttering, do you throw your ticket out the window and jump? Or do you say, just give this a little bit of time because this will come right. And I go back to Paul Warren who's equally, if not very, well, the best successful manager here in, in decades in terms of promotions and, and winning at Wembley. Uh, Paul needed time at key times, he got time. But when you're Steve Evans walking back into this football club, Time is not afforded to you, because I genuinely believe we're, we'll be a promotion contender. I believed it when I walked in, I still see it now. But results have not dictated that. But expectation comes when I walk in. If they'd have brought Joe Brown in as manager, they'd have said, I need time, he needs a window. He's got a mess to clear up for two, from two years. I don't get that time. I have to produce it. And at the minute, I'm failing to do that. So I have to, I have to make sure I get myself right and I'm responsible for players getting their form right. Are you concerned at all that if, and I know this is maybe looking at it from a negative angle, but if Lincoln scored first, what the atmosphere might be like and how important is it that if you do face setbacks in this game, that the atmosphere doesn't turn? 
Well, I think it's important. I spoke about how our supporters need to be unified unity. I went to a cup tie on Saturday, Peter versus Notts County. Notts County go 2-1 in front up, 2-1 in front against the top player. It's probably one of the loudest I've heard the Peter United fans getting behind the team. So from that point of view, it's um, it's massively important for all of us that Lincoln could score first, but a game's not winning 45 minutes. And, I, and if I go back to Barnsley, and I don't want to think too many thoughts back at Barnsley, but the one thing I thought that was harsh on the team was half-time. Not full-time, full-time, 100%. They deserve to say what they think, but a half time one nil no, no down, away from home in a derby, and we've played well for the first 15, 20 minutes of the game. Granted, we finished second best in that first half, but there can still be a nearer fight from the seats as well, and, and being together with us. So we'll need that on Tuesday, and I'm not one to, to, to plead with the fans. I'm saying be a supporter of the football club through the 90 minutes on, on Tuesday. If it's not right at the end, they'll, they'll express their feelings anyway. Will you get it right, Steve? You know, is it, with time, will you get this right? Absolutely. There's no question about whether we'll get it right. It's we, we've gone through the most alarming situations with injury and illness. If you'd have seen the team hotel last week, for example, at Crawley a week past Saturday, we had to change our team five times from planning on Thursday and Friday to actually the 11 that played. Two lads that were going to get 10 minutes, 15 minutes off the bench at the end, starting again. Three players sitting on the substitute bench, chittering and ill. Players sent home in the train, players sent home from the team coach on Friday. When you see those circumstances and then you look at the treatment room that's been there since the start of the season, you start to think, mm, was, was the gods with me when I come back to Rotherham United? Are they going to be with me? But when you get adversity like that, what do you do? You, you have to stay calm. You have to stay measured. You have to let your eyes tell you the truth and not hide behind what's right. So it might mean that, that some players miss out now because we have to pick what our eyes are showing us who should play. Finally, you, you obviously mentioned missing players. What's the latest in terms of the health of the squad? What's the news? We're in really good shape. There's only Liam Kelly missed yesterday with a little bit of illness. Uh, Liam's never really recovered from, I think, I think probably evidentially COVID from, from what he described his whole family situation. Um, but yeah, other than, other than that, we're good to go and we're expecting to see Liam back in today. So. Uh, we're, listen, in terms of coming out and being physically fit and able for fit for selection, we're in a really good, best place we've been since probably since we signed the players and trained for the first few days. That's the best we've been. Match sharpness and match fitness to go in 95 minutes, I think not with three or four of them. But adrenaline often pulls you through in those situations. You've seen players come back from injury and the plan is an hour, but they're that much in the game and the top of the game and loving it. They play they play for three days. Cheers, Steve. Thank you, Rick. Do you feel that most fans are still with you? Listen, I can't, I can't even determine what the fans think. I think there'll be a lot of fans saying, wow, if, if, this, if this don't, if this don't, um, results don't change, then I'll change. You know, but, you know, I, I don't send a message to the fans. I, I send a message, look, this is within football, is that some people wish for things that ends up not being the right thing. So all I'm saying, I've got... I've got full support of my players and the, and the staff, full support from the chairman and, and all the board. Has to be emphasised, all the board. So, so from that point of view, I just have to keep my head down, Paul. Keep working hard, you know. And, and ultimately, you know what 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 gets fans on side, what gets chairman on side, what gets everyone on side is, is winning football matches. So, I think they've been I think they've been patient because they've watched a, a number of poor performances this season. But when they've watched a really good performance, they've seen this they've seen the team win. Like Huddersfield, like Reading, you know, like we ain't Charlton, we should have won, you know, things like that. So um, I just have to keep doing my job. Finally, seems positive on the injury front. Does, does that mean that Malik Wilkes and Jamie McCart are both available? Oh, well, they're training. Whether we deem them to be selected, we'll, we'll see. But they've both trained since the, the back end of last week. They've both come through every day. So we've been in every day. Um, both lads are walking a bit with a smile on their face, which indicates to me that they think that they know they're available. Yeah, but I'm back with the main group. Not oh yeah, they're, they're training with the main. They've been training with the main group since since the middle of last week. Yeah, and will, will Liam Kelly miss out tomorrow? Or if he's all right we'll see how he is today. Yeah, just Liam. Liam got badly. Um, I mean, him and Sam Nimby were the two worst affected for sure. But you know, I could I could name seven or eight other lads like Jules, Reese James. Uh, Jordy Hugo was particularly bad with it. Johnson Clark Harris. Th th it was some. It's a bug that came into the camp and it spread like wildfire. And there's nothing we could do to contain it. We had to give the boys and doctors instructions two days last week to try and move it. 
it's moved at principally everyone's back in saying they're symptom free and they're, they're training and there's, there's only Liam that wasn't quite right. Okay, uh, great to see Andre Green play again last week. Uh, yeah. How, how did that go and how far away is he yeah. from being in your first team contention? Well, Andre Green's so talented player, he, he comes immediately into your thoughts. However, he's it's his first time in, a, in any form of competitive action for 14 months. It's incredibly long time. I think he said he was particularly tired after his 20 minute cameo at Doncaster Rovers in a, in a, in a training ground game that doesn't carry the pressures and the intensity of a, of a league game. Uh, but Andre's trained very well, so in, in every day he gets near fitness, we have a really class player. Four or five weeks down the line, we've got a real class act. Yeah. Before Christmas? Yeah, for sure. Nice. Yeah, I'm thinking, yeah, for sure. He'll be involved in their own team before Christmas. In terms of probably building them up to be playing and starting games and, and getting through games, I, I think it may be into the January period before he does that. But, you know, whether I'm manager or Donald Duck's a manager, and come January you've got you've got one hell of a player walking in the building fresh and ready to play, and that's Andrew Green. Andrew, how good was it to be back on the pitch in that behind closed doors game last week? Yeah, it was really good. Um, waited a long long time for that moment, so um, yeah, it felt felt really good to be back out there. A bit surreal, to be fair. Um, kind of forgot what that feeling is. It's been been a long time, so. Um, yeah, just just when Gaffer said oh, I'm going to be involved, um, I couldn't wait really, and to get minutes was was a really great feeling. What is that feeling like? Because you're a footballer, you want to play football, don't you? And when you're mm -hmm. not able to do that, and you can finally get out on a pitch. What does it feel like? Um, it's just excitement, really. Especially in my situation, I was just excited to. I didn't care. I didn't put any pressure on myself. I didn't care how I was going to play. Uh, first ten minutes, I felt good as well. I felt the adrenaline got me through it. Um, and then, yeah, start you start to realise after ten minutes, this this is tough. Like, it's going to be a tough road back to full fitness. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm building slowly. Um, the excitement levels are going to be there for a few months, and um, I just can't wait to get back out there in in well, hopefully in, in a full packed stadium as well, um, whenever that may be. So yeah, I'm excited. Can you talk about the process of match fitness because? It's easy to say, OK, you've, you've recovered from an injury, you can get back on the pitch again, but you do need to sort of build those minutes in your legs, don't you? You can't just go out and suddenly, ah, oh, 90 minutes. It's yeah, great. yeah, it's difficult, um, especially mentally as well. What, one thing you forget and what I forgot was adrenaline can get you so far. Um, and then, like I say, after 10 minutes, you think mentally you've got to, even simple things. You've got to, if you're tired and you've got to pass the ball and it, you've got to think about it. And you it's, it's a lot of things that go into it. And that's what's going to take the longest, I think. I think I'm naturally fit anyway, so... I could probably last a long, long time in a game, um, but then when you're tired and you've got to make them important decisions, that's when that'll take me time to get back. What's the best thing right now? Is it a cameo from the bench, building up the minutes that way, or is it to start a game and say play an hour and, and do it that way? Uh, I think for me personally, it'll be off the bench because the situation we're in as well. I, I, I don't want to. I don't want to be selfish. Obviously, I want to say I want to start, I want to start on Tuesday, I want to start tomorrow and play uh, 90 minutes but my situation has been so so difficult um, and complex like it's, I can't just come in and, and take that, that chance really um, so I'd rather give the lads the best chance and they're, they're, they're a lot fitter than me to go and win the game um, and then hopefully come on off the bench and impact the game in a, in a good way. It feels like there's a story to be written where like you come off the bench in a game, maybe mm -hmm. get a winning goal or something like that, do you ever visualise so have you visualised that maybe over the last few months, thinking when yeah. you get back, you know, getting a big moment like that? Yeah, I have. Um, hopefully it comes in my first one. Um, and obviously now my situation is different where I've, I'll have my daughter in the, in, the, uh, in the stands as well. So that's another thing that I want to do. I want to do it for her. I want to do it for my family. Um, and I want everyone to be there. Obviously, I don't know if I'm going to be involved, say, tomorrow or on the weekend. Uh, but I've got all my family on standby get them as many tickets as I can just to come to that first game, um, whether I'm in the squad, whether I to tell them to come and I'm not even on the bench, but I'm just waiting for that moment where I am and hopefully I'll come on and I can I can create a moment. Is it quite an emotional time because all of these people, these family members, these friends, I guess will have done a lot to help you over the last few months? Yeah, yeah, they have. The, it's been a, a tough year for everyone. Um, they've, they've been there every step of the way for me um, and there's been a lot of change in, in life. Um, but they've, they've always done their best they can to, to help. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been really beneficial for me. Uh, difficult for them, but that's what they, what family do. And uh, it's, been, it's been really, really good for me. Best of luck with it, mate. Thank you. Can you remember your first talk? Do you think it's done? Um, 
can't. I remember getting smashed, and that's Did that's you? what was worry, worrying me. Yeah, but um, I don't remember the first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the first ten minutes, I was like, I was good. I, was, I felt felt really good. Um, but like I say, after that, it's just getting that fitness back in. But yeah, it was good. The game was good for me to say I got smashed. It was good for my confidence to know I can get. Yeah, I can get past that barrier. Um, I just stopped the ball dead. Uh, turn and then there was two people coming at me and one kicked me in the, the actual my Achilles um, and that's just reassured me that everything's yeah, okay. Us, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, in terms of the team, I mean, it's, it's good for them to have a player of quality coming back after you know, a difficult time for you, it's been a difficult time for them as well. You know, it's, it's almost like that cliche of a new sign. Yeah, that's, I think that's what it's going to feel like. Um, Probably for the fans as well that I've I've only played say nine ten games yeah so it's and that's what Paul Douglas said to me as well when I when I saw him the other day um, he said it's going to be a new signing when you're back and I think it is it's going to be it's going to be that um, I'm going to come back in maybe not where I want to be but it's a new face a uh, new dynamic maybe if I'm on the wing something different because um, I know we played plays as a 10 and then two strikers as well so whether I'll come on if I'm on in the 10 or if I'm a winger I'll, I'll try my best and try and stretch the game and run in behind.